First, let me thank the organizers to, for the opportunity to speak at this very interesting conference with so many colleagues whom I respect so much. My topic, like that of uh, my colleague Milan Hulmark, refers to the codification of civil law in the Czech Republic. Uh, I will thus take the liberty of following up on it. At the same time, however, I will focus on the reasons of the new codification. The success of any codification depends on whether it, it has achieved its objectives. I will therefore first try to explain the objectives of codification uh, in the Czech Republic. I will then discuss the procedure that was chosen both in terms of organization and in terms of the sources of inspiration for the new code. Finally, I will try to express my own opinion as to whether the objectives pursued have been achieved. In general, codifications are regularly produced for two reasons, which are fundamentally different. First, they can be a product of a continuous development. The state of society, legal practice, and legal doctrine slowly evolve over time, deviate from the existing written law, and there is a need to capture this pre-existing development in a new way in the written law. The second reason for adopting a new code is to change the existing legal order. Legal order. In this case, a new code is an instrument of change. And we have already heard that was the Czech case. It should be emphasized that every change can, comes with costs. And in the second situation, so when the, if the new code is an instrument of change, the cost associated with the new codifications are considerably higher than in the first case. Not only you cannot use the old case law, but try to look at it through the eyes of a practicing lawyer. He is in a very difficult situation. In addition to the daily routine that earns him a living, he has to learn the new law in a similar way uh, to what he used to do in the law school, but now without any support of his teachers. So, so why did the Czech Republic need a new civil code? The Czech Republic had already had three civil codes before 2014. Since 1811, the Bohemian lands, it means Moravia, Bohemia, Moravia, and the part of Silesia, had the old Austrian General Civil Code, ABGB, as we already heard. Then, after the World War II, when the communists came to power, a new civil code was adopted in 1950 to reflect the new social conditions. Then, in the early 60s, the communists believed that socialism has won in Czechoslovakia, that th thus they adopted another socialist civil code in 1964. And did, it was already the third one. This was supposed to be a model code for a socialist society, and it was indeed the inspiration for the civil code of the German Democratic Republic from 1975. But that's not enough. It can be even said that the Czech Republic had not three, but five civil codes by 2014. Be uh, before 1990, Czechoslovakia had two codes in parallel, both of which acted as civil codes. One, the real civil code of 1964 uh, for internal relations, and one for when the Czech law of obligations was applied in international trade. It was so-called international trade code. And then after 1989, the civil code was amended to such an extent that it was practically a new code. And 
that I'm not counting the finished draft of a new civil code of 1937, which was never implemented because of the emerging war situation. This proposal didn't, didn't want to reshape existing law, uh, that was the ABGB, but only to moderni modernize, modernize it, to, to, to make a facelift, and to introduce it uniformly throughout Czechoslovakia. It should be remembered that the Austro-Hungarian dualism persisted to some extent in Czechoslovakia after World War I, because in Bohemian lands, the general civil code was in force, while in Slovakia and in Transcarpathian Ukraine, which was then part of Czechoslovakia, the old Hungarian law was in force. I particularly mention this 1937 proposal because, because it was also of great importance for the present codification. So if we look at the last hundred years in the Czech Republic in this way, so we can say that a civil code of some kind has been prepared almost continuously. So five civil codes are not few. Actually, it's already quite a lot. So why a sixth one? The main reason was the third code of 1964. It was completely devastating effect on the Czechoslovak civil law. Its authors tried first to differentiate between socialist law, uh, uh, differentiate the socialist law from capitalist law and create a completely new socialist code for a socialist society. And second, they tried to simplify it uh, and remove legal complexities so that no special legal knowledge was needed to understand it. So the aspiration to differentiate the Czechoslovak civil law from capitalist law led to the modification or even elimination of a number of classical institutes and their, their replacement by completely new ones. For example, the civil code didn't know the category of the law of obligations. You cannot imagine that. It knew more categories of, of the right of ownership as it was customary in socialist law. But the Czechoslovak law didn't know the pledge. Uh, it didn't know the lease, but instead of, uh, of it, uh, a special institution of personal use was created, which, however, in some cases was closer to the right of ownership. For a certain period of time, it didn't know possession and tenure. It had also insuff insufficiently protected some important legal values without which contemporary law cannot be imagined. For example, legal certainty and good faith, uh, as well as individual freedom and the autonomy of will associated with it. And the fulfillment of the second objective, so the simplification, didn't, le didn't lead to great cl greater clarity of the law, but rather to vulgarization. This can be demonstrated, for example, by the fact that the regulation of the obligations between citizens, today we would say C2C relations, was contained in a mere 27 paragraphs. The purchase and exchange in these relations was regulated in mere seven paragraphs. And that was all. So at the same time, also the legal doctrine has ceased to support legal practice. It has ceased to be concerned with legal dogmatics and ceased to be focused on finding solutions to complex legal questions, to solve the hard cases. The doctrine has rather dealt with new conception of civil law for the new society, but this, this led to a preoccupation just with systematic conceptual issues, which often took the form of ideological ballast. Delegate ferenda considerations were often pursued, but existing delegate lata problems were, weren't addressed. To illustrate, uh, this, to illustrate it, the first major commentary on the code from 19, 
1964 was published more than 20 years later in 1987. And this major commentary had only two small format volumes. Uh, also teaching in law schools was largely an ideological preparation. Detailed knowledge of the law wasn't acquired by the graduates. Czechoslovak civil code remained in this state also after the so-called Volvat Revolution in 1989. It was quite clear that it could not be a functional code for a free society with a market economy. It was therefore necessary to amend the civil code almost immediately to restore so normal private law. The change had to be prepared quickly, practically in little more than one year. It was decided not to return to the law in force before the communists came to power, so it, to, to ABGB, unfortunately, in my opinion, but to provisionally fix the existing legal order and work on a new comprehensive codification. Therefore, a major amendment uh, to the 1964 Civil Code was adopted in 1991. This change brought civil law back closer to the classical model of private law. For example, it returned some classical institute we have lost before. It was clear from the outset that this was a temporary provisional change pending the adoption of the new civil code. But this lasted more than 20 years. In addition to the major amendment of the civil code, also the commercial code was adopted, which also incorporated a distinctive regulation of the law of obligations uh, that applied specifically to commercial relations. Thus, the law of obligation was regulated in two ways. Uh, one for B2B relations, it was the commercial code, and one uh, for other relations, it means B2C and C2C relations. Thus, there was, for example, a double regulation of purchase contract, uh, double regulation of war contract, the mandate contract, uh, contractual pen penalties were regulated twice, etc., etc. The differences were often significant, but at the same time without any reason for the different regulations. The difference was often simply due to the fact that the two codes were drafted by different groups of lawyers who didn't communicate with each other in the hectic post-revolutionary period. And this exactly was the situation in which the new civil code was created. So what we expected, expected from the new civil code, first, return to classical private law, provide a, rati uh, uh, a rational solution to legal issues, provide an appropriate basis for further development. The codifications process, which subsequently led to, uh, the, adoption, to the adoption of the current civil code, began in 2000 and lasted a little more than 10 years. With the preparation of the draft, as chief editor was entrusted an academic lawyer, Professor Karel Eliash, and also uh, a so-called recodification commission was at, uh, established to support him. The recodification commission was initially composed mostly of practitioners and academics who had received their education before 1990. They were rather suspicious of major transformation of private law. Then after 2006, the Recodification Commission was substantially removed and was supplemented by a number of younger lawyers who had received their education after 1990, partly with experience from abroad. These lawyers, and this also included me and uh, colleague Milan Hulmark, logically lacked broader experience. However, we were willing to make a more significant transformation. The main source of inspiration for the new law was the draft of civil code of 1937, in effect, so the general civil code. 
However, it was clear that it could not be taken over completely. For example, the old family law regulation could not be used as a basis for the new code. Contract law was taken over in many aspects from the previous commercial code, and it follows that the draft uh, civil code of 1937 inspired in particular the law of property and the law of succession. Uh, ad hoc inspiration was also sought in a number of other legal systems. It was already mentioned uh, from, the, from, the, from the German BGB, uh, Italian Codice Civile, Quebec Code Civil, or from the Dutch law. Uh, the code was finalized in 99, uh, 2009 and passed in 2012. Uh, its enactment was really not easy and it must be admitted that the new code was adopted against strong opposition from the legal practice. It was because a, uh, after a certain period of time, the willingness to change began to decrease substantially. The system had become entrenched. At, at least routine situations were handled perhaps imperfectly, but predictably, predictably. And after 20 years, a practicing lawyer in routine situations usually knew what to advise to clients to do or how to decide a standard case. Logically, the practice didn't want to get used to a completely new law. Actually, I can say it was a miracle uh, that the code was adopted. So, my evaluation of the new code. Uh, it is clear from the above that in the Czech Republic, the new code was not a smooth culmination of continuous development, but was intended to be an instrument of change, an instrument for completing the transformation of private law in the Czech Republic. But it was also an instrument for correcting the problems caused by the rapid change after 1989, in particular the double regulation of the law of obligations. This also entailed the high transformation cost mentioned above. But if, but if we proceed from the above mentioned objective, objectives of codification, then in my opinion, they have been met. The Czech Republic currently has a functioning civil code uh, that can be simply, sim, uh, simplifically described as normal. Maybe it's not, it's not so much, but it is a normal civil code, and that's a lot for us. In the absolute majority of cases, it solves problems using classical legal instrument in a way that is compatible with some of the approaches of continental legal orders. The method of adopting from more advanced legal systems, whether it was the pre-war -Czech -Pre Czechoslovak draft or contemporary foreign legal systems, it led to the creation of a law what is certainly of better quality than if it had been created purely by codifying the legal knowledge and experience of the Czech Republic at that time. Some efforts to improve the sources of inspiration have led to a better result, but sometimes due to a lack of detailed knowledge, they have created new problems that the original text did not contain. The new law had an enormous impact on legal doctrine. Both the scope and the quality of the legal lit literature have increased significantly. The earlier thesis, where the problem begins, the commentary ends, it's no longer self-evident. It is the enormous contemporary task of legal doctrine to work out the new law, to think through its application to, the, to its consequences, to propose coherent solution, solutions to legal problems, to discover internal contradiction and to try to eliminate them. Simply said, to build legal dogmatics of the new code. So we can also say what, is the, the less, what are the lessons learned from the Czech codification. I think there is a lesson learned 
for a country that does not have a developed legal dogmatics or has lost it, like the Czech Republic. And this is, in my opinion, this. First, make the transformation of the law as soon as possible while there is a willingness to the change. Second, if you do it right on the first try, you don't have to bear the transaction cost twice. And third, copy as much as possible. If possible, from a limited number of, of sources. If possible, from a source from which it will be possible to draw inspiration for working with the adopted law in the future. So where there are good dogmatics, uh, extensive case law, and the language is accessible. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for our attention.